Hello, my name is Kishore Mandhyan. I'm the co-convener of the Aam Aadmi Party in Maharashtra. Prior to this, I was the political director in the cabinet of the United Nations Secretary General. But over the last eight years to nine years, since the founding of the Aam Aadmi Party, I have basically been working on the ground with colleagues and karyakartas to further the aims and objectives of the party. Now, tomorrow is Constitution Day. It is the 26th of November. And we have to ask ourselves a basic question. What does the Constitution mean? What is the legacy of the Constitution? And what is its future? Now, we live in the present, so to some extent, the legacy and the future of the Constitution depends on how we see it today and how we engage with it today. As you know, the Constitution is a guiding document. It is a framework document to bring order to any political system. It is a reference point. Now, the Indian Constitution has a deep legacy. It is one of the most detailed constitutions. It is also a constitution which has dr uh, basically drawn inspiration from a large number of constitutions. Most importantly, the constitutions of the United States, of France, of Ireland, just to name a few. It is a constitution which reflects within its framework the overall direction of our goals, of our tasks and activities in the conduct of political social and economic life. So, the question to be asked is, what is the situation of the Constitution today? You have a Constitution which has about 400 plus articles. It has gone through 105 amendments. It has a number of schedules and there really are two aspects to the Constitution, philosophically and substantively. The Constitution in of itself, the core consisting of the various articles, and also the directive principles of state policy, which are embedded in the Constitution, though they are not justiciable. But nonetheless, if you can call the Constitution, the substantive Constitution, the head and the body the, or the mind of the overall constitutional structure, then you can call the directive principles of state policy the soul and the heart of the Constitution. So the question therefore arises that which is more important? I think both are important. The structure is important because on the one hand, you have the main body which becomes the basis for enabling all other legislation and processes or procedures which flow from the Constitution. And mind you, the legitimacy of this Constitution derived from a constituent assembly and not a parliamentary uh, assembly. So in that sense, it is a very sacred source, the constituent assembly. The constitution has been amended a number of times and likely to be amended a number of times. And any good constitution should, for the purposes of proper guidance, be both stable and flexible so that transitions from one philosophical 
and real situation in particular decades can flow to the other. But then the ultimate sacredness of the constitution comes from the constituent assembly. And we have to tread very carefully on how we see that particular aspect of dealing with the constitution. On the other hand, besides the substance and the procedural aspects, there is what is what you might call the cultural aspect of the constitution. It is a modernist constitution. And it's, uh, of course, drawn from the 1935 Constitution of India Act, which was framed under the British. But of the 1947 uh, constitution, which was ultimately adopted in 1950, on the 26th of uh, January, actually goes much further. The structure and the processes that are engaged within it are much further than the times. And therefore the culture which undergirds the constitution and which is expected of citizens to encounter the constitution in times of crisis and in times of daily governance is a challenging task because we are a very diverse country. We are a country which uh, uh, has different social and economic needs. And it is therefore very, very important as to how we engage the constitution between the substantive part and the guiding principles of state policy, which is the the director principles of state policy, which is, as I mentioned earlier, the soul and heart. And I think we have seen some of that in our public interest litigation. But uh, the thing that Dr. Ambedkar was most mindful about was that there has to be a certain constitutional morality which shapes the culture, the legal culture on how citizens engage with governance in India. And that, I think, is the most important at this critical period. What does the Aam Army Party, or what is its attitude towards the Constitution? I think it embraces the Constitution. It thinks it is sacred. It vows by the Constitution in framing its ideals and framing its goals. More importantly, it sees itself as a guardian and the warrior for the Constitution. And that is very important because for us, the Constitution is a dharma. The Constitution is the karma. The Constitution is for us, all of us who are fighting for it, the living chariot on which we will build our value system and our program. Thank you very much.